Vein shear tests can be an excellent method of measuring the undrained shear strength of cohesive soils, either in the laboratory or in situ at the bottom of a borehole, as long as the soils are in intact condition. So they need to be relatively undisturbed samples. In either case, the idea is to take a metal vein, which has four thin, rigid blades on it, insert it down with as little disturbance as possible into the soil, and then slowly rotate that vein at a constant rate of rotation. Meanwhile, you'd measure the torque that's required to turn the vein. And we would assume that that torque is being balanced by a uniformly distributed shear stress around the cylindrical surface um, defined by the diameter and height of the vein. So there's a peripheral surface, which is vertical and round like a cylinder. Plus, we would include the end areas on the top and bottom and assume that they're all resisting that rotation with the same shear stress at any given time. In this lab-based device, the rotation is applied through a variable speed motor which can turn this horizontally geared wheel at different rates depending on what's desired. This rigid block is fixed to that surface and so as the wheel turns it moves around and eventually comes into contact with a blade on this horizontal bar. So that blade or that point of action is at a constant known distance from the center of rotation. That bar has four strain gauges, two on each side, uh, which are connected in a Wheatstone bridge. And so a signal conditioner can monitor those four strain gauges as a load cell. And essentially what it's doing is measuring the bending moment as the rod in the center resists rotation and the block is pushing on this end. So those load cell readings can then be recorded to a computer uh, at high, high frequency. And if we calibrate the system by applying known moments to look at the voltage output from the bending load cell, we can calibrate the system that way. That way we can look at the data file and interpret any voltage as a known moment acting on the vein rods. This is a five inch diameter tube sample that's relatively undisturbed and we're going to use it for laboratory testing for multiple purposes. So we're going to want to compare the lab vein shear results with some UU triaxial results and a CU triaxial result that are all trimmed to this specimen geometry. So what we're going to do is essentially treat the specimen as quarters and we'll run the lab vein in one quadrant of this undisturbed sample and save the rest of the material for extrusion later and using uh, that for undrained um, UU testing and CU testing. So in order to insert the vein, we need to lift it up out of the way slide the specimen underneath and place it down. We don't want to be too close to the sampler edge or we might be in material that's disturbed from the sampling process, but we also want to stay away from the middle of the specimen or we'll disturb those other quadrants that we want to uh, save for later. So we'll, we'll put it there and we're going to insert it with some space between the block and the rod. I'm going to center it left and right a little better here. And then we want to just firmly and slowly insert the vein. We want to go well below the top surface of the soil because we want the soil to shear along that top surface of the vein itself. Now we're 
down to the level of the block. The vein is about an inch and a half below the surface of the soil here. That's more than we need, but it's fine. And any torque that's registering here um, will be measured in the initial values in the uh, data file. So we'll get that started. And now we're going to power the motor and turn this forward direction. And you can see the block is advancing here on the bar. I'm going to hold the sample so we don't get rotation. And we'll run the test. Contact. So now we're rotating the vein within the soil, generating shear resistance, reaches peak very quickly. We'll talk about why, and we'll let this go on well past the peak with the torque dropping with time. That's about a quarter of a revolution. We're going to pause there for a second. And we've now already measured the peak shear strength of the soil when we saw the peak torque. The torque is directly related to the shear stress acting in the soil. One of the things that the vein shear test is very good though also is for soils that have some sensitivity, we can measure the peak strength and then we can measure the residual strength very easily using the same equipment. So what we're gonna do is rotate the whole system several times to give us some, give us a remolded condition along the failure surface. I'm just making sure all the wires stay clear here. So that's one and a half revolutions. We'll go out to two revolutions. And we're going to stop. We're going to bring the rate back down to the initial slow rate and get readings at completely remolded conditions. So this is at the same strain rate now, but after very large shear stra uh, strains have been developed along the failure plane. So it should be out in the residual case. And so we're getting essentially constant shear resistance now. It's no longer dropping, it's down at a residual value and we can calculate the sensitivity immediately without even knowing the geometry of the veins by knowing just the ratio of the torque. The peak torque divided by the residual torque is gonna to be the same as the peak shear stress divided by the residual shear stress. Stop system there. Um, if we were uh, we'll remove this then, we'll take the sample back, put the plastic bag back on it, uh, put it back in the wet room so we don't uh, lose those intact conditions and the capillary suction in the, in the soil. Um, but uh, we're going to relate this test, the lab vein shear test, to the field vein shear test, which would be run with a vein perhaps something like this, much larger. Uh, instead of being connected to this rod on this motor, this would be connected to uh, drill stem that goes up to the ground surface, but the test is very similar in concept. So we'd have a long rod going up to the ground surface, uh, means of measuring torque at the top. Uh, there are fancy systems nowadays where the torque is measured very close to the vein down at the bottom of the borehole, um, but a lot of systems aren't that sophisticated. Uh, as you can imagine, the larger the vein is, the more surface area there is, the more torque you need for a given shear strength, right? Because there's a lot more area 
on this vein. So the key quantity we need to reduce the data are the dimensions. The geometry of the vein provides the information we need for a constant that relates the measured torque to the shear stress in the soil.